Hi everyone, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be just doing a really quick and easy fix. Well, hopefully quick and easy fix. I've said it now, so let's see. Over the weekend, this pull cord light broke, so I'm just gonna show you how to fix these if the same happens to you. First thing you wanna do, as with any electrical project, is obviously turn the lights off so there's no power coming to the switch. So we'll go downstairs and we'll flick the switch and then we'll make sure there's no power coming to the light switch. So you can see the fuses here, the breakers, and we need lights upstairs. So you're just gonna flick that off. And I'll turn the lights off upstairs. You can see the downstairs lights are still on, but if we go upstairs, hello boss, the upstairs lights are off. So there's no power coming to the upstairs lights. So you shouldn't really need many tools for this. I've just got a Phillips and a flathead screwdriver. This is one of the insulated ones for obviously doing electrical work. And when you touch the end, if there's any power coming through the cable, it'll light up. So we can obviously test to make sure there's no power coming to it. So first thing you want to do is obviously just take this plate off. Mine's just got two flathead screws in this. Couldn't remember what screws it was, so I brought a Phillips as well. We might be able to do this all with the one screwdriver. This light switch is broken, well, pull cord has broken before. So it's not the first time this has happened. Right, what you can see here is, this red cable, because this is old wiring, it would be brown potentially on yours. This red cable is the live. So what I'm going to do is just touch the terminal with this screwdriver and then touch the end. And if it lights up, for some reason there's still power, but because we've switched the breaker off, there shouldn't be any power. So I touch the end, nothing lights up. So that wire is completely safe to do. So I'm just going to remove this cable. And then remove the black neutral cable. <laughs> so the neutral comes out of the two way and the lives came out of the com, which I'll show you there. So the dusty but two way was the neutral and the live was out of the com. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of just bits of dirt in this. In fact, a bit of cables just come out even. And what normally happens is the dirt just gets inside here to the switch. In fact, you could hear it switch there, but it's stopped again. And normally you just need to clean a bit of dirt out. So let's have a go at that now. Going to take these two screws off, which hold this plate on. Just be careful when you do this because it is on a spring mechanism. And if you're not careful, the whole thing can spring off, and then you'll not see how to reassemble it. Whoa. So basically that's your pull cord and it springs up and down just on that spring. And then this piece, which is all falling apart now. But this basically has
these connectors that go into there. Um, like that. That was just one of the screws that holds that in. It's kind of self-explanatory what this should look like if it does pop out like it did for me. It's fairly easy to just sort it. So we're not using these currently to put any cables in. We use that when it's on the back. And obviously we just undo those screws. So we'll do that after. So what I'm going to do now is just take the spring back and then just give this a bit of a clean and a wipe out to get rid of all this dirt. So I'm going to shake any of the grit out. Then I've just got a cotton bud that I'm just going to I'll just take the dirt with. Same with around this part. Just to make sure there's no grit in there. Because basically what you want to happen is when this gets pulled and released, so when you pull it and it pops back, these little these little teeth that you can see should move up and round and that basically switches the switch on for you. So we'll get this back together. So just make sure that everything's in the right spot. And then you just put these two together. That should fit into there nicely. And then that will sit onto there again. As you can hear, that switch is now working. Often just taking it apart and reassembling it, sorts it out because of the little bit of dirt or grit that's in there normally gets freed up by doing it. Right, so that's those back together. And that's working. So obviously we need to now refit this and put the correct cables back into the correct parts. So we've got the two way and the comm to connect. So I'll go back over to where the light switch is mounted and I'll reconnect these cables back up to the correct ones on the two-way and the comm. Then I'll fasten everything up, tighten it all up. I'll go back downstairs, turn the breaker back on, then I'll come back upstairs and this switch should work fine then. Right, so we'll get these cables back connected. We've got the, obviously the live and the neutral there. So like we said, the live goes to the comm so I will get that back into there and tighten that screw back up to nip the wire into place. It doesn't have to be too crazy tight but it needs to obviously be secure and snug. And then this is the two way which the neutral goes on to. Like I say, your wiring may well be modern wiring, but this is old wiring. So as you can see, it's had a brown sleeve put on it to show that obviously they're both equivalent of lives. Um, but the old wiring was red and black. But on a switch, they both basically become live anyway, so can then push that back into place, sit in there and get these screws back in. That's the one. And 
and you just want to nip them up. Again, you don't have to do them silly tight. You don't want to strip them or break the screws or plastic housing. But there we go. So as you can see now, the pull cord is working. You can hear that working. So let me go downstairs. I'll stick, I'll turn the breaker back on, come back upstairs. Just make sure that obviously the wiring's all secure properly and then these lights should come straight on. So back to the fuse board and we want, where is it? Lights upstairs, flip that back on. Shut that cupboard back up. Now we can go back upstairs and check everything's gone back on. As you can see, the upstairs lights have gone back on, so obviously the brake has worked fine. And then if we go into the bathroom, lights on and lights off. So there we go, we're all sorted. In the end, you literally just needed one tool. You might need two if your screws are Phillips screws. But it's a nice, quick and easy job. That's the sort of job where if you're calling someone out, it's gonna cost you a call out charge and probably an hour's labor. And I've just fixed that in probably five minutes, about as long as this video is gonna be. So five or 10 minutes, nice and easy and Obviously it saves you spending money on fixing something that is really easy to fix to be fair. And it's pretty much always the same thing, 99% of the time, unless something's broken up there from someone like yanking on the cord, which can happen. Sometimes if you've maybe got kids or visitors who aren't used to these and they yank down hard or something, it can obviously be an issue. Or if it gets stuck, and isn't working and someone starts writhing on it sometimes that can obviously be an issue but 99% of the time it's literally just the mechanism up in there has a tiny bit of grit in and it's stopping that piece that I showed you before moving around so it's such an easy fix and it saves you shelling out for an electrician to come and sort it for you so as always thank you for watching if you haven't already subscribed I would really appreciate you doing so it's free to do and it really helps the channel grow so thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next one.